Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, first uh, allow me to extend uh, on behalf of the project group uh, our thanks to the organizers for their kind invitation to make this presentation and extend a warm welcome to our distinguished guests from abroad that they go gone into this uh, travel and time allocation to share time with us and share their experiences. A quick clarification, after consultation with uh, the organizers, we agreed that within the cortex, which is a much wider scope of the air connectivity development for Cyprus through change, cooperation and innovation, we, as you have seen, modified our title of the presentation in order to share with you the vision of the tourist partners of the private sector uh, for the future of uh, Cyprus tourism. So let us have a quick look uh, in summary the presentation uh, with the titles. Where are we? A very quick introduction to the history of our tourist arrivals uh, to Cyprus. Then we offer and share with you our medium term vision. And then we will enlist the major pillars of our development strategy and action plans which will enable us to fulfill this vision. Then we'll look into a quick, uh, close look to the German market and the way for its further development. And then we'll move with a leap back to the future with the bigger picture and the long-term vision uh, that we have. This is not a very uh, happy state of affairs and that's why we are circle it because after reaching the record low levels record high levels of our tourist arrivals back in 2001 with 2.7 million tourist arrivals. We followed a more or less a declining trend uh, reaching a plateau around 2.4 to 2.5 million tourist arrivals annually to Cyprus. So let us move on to the real substance and the challenge uh, of our medium term uh, vision. But this graph, which shows the monthly distribution of the tourist arrivals to Cyprus in recent years, as against the record year of 2001 as well, it is becoming evident that in the summer peak seasons of July and August and September, where we attract monthly around 350,000 tourist arrivals, uh, in contrast, in the lowest months of the year, that is namely January, February and December, we only attract a minor fraction of that, around 50 to 60,000 tourist arrivals monthly. And this gives us the direction and the challenge as to where is the scope to concentrate our efforts in order to, one, mitigate the seasonality problem and ensure the maximum contribution of the tourist industry to the overall economy. So the bars that you see escalating and then coming down again will enable us to move from the 2.5 million around that we enjoy uh, the recent years to 3.5 million tourist arrivals uh, annually in the next, by the next five years. It's a nice, uh, I would say, medium term uh, vision, but unless you specify and make it more uh, specific and into which target markets that we see it is feasible to enable us reach this level. We see the bread and butter of Cyprus tourists being historically the United Kingdom to go from the 1 million, around 1 million tourist arrivals to 1.5 million, and it's not arbitrary the numbers that we use ladies and gentlemen, is 1.5 million British tourists annually we used to have few years back. So we lost effectively 33% of the British market uh, since that time. Then the German market from 105,000 uh, tourist arrivals we had last year to half a million and we'll elaborate further when we look closer to the German market. The Scandinavian markets currently are 250,000 in the next five years to double their numbers. Russia and the other republic republics of the Commonwealth of Independent States, which have to clarify here and remind uh, especially our distinguished guests from abroad that it's the market that developed the more rapid expansion 
in recent years from 150,000 Russian tourists that we had a few years back, we have exceeded last year 600,000. And the potential is there for reaching 1 million within the next uh, 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 five years, enabled by the recent liberalization of the, and lifting of the charter restrictions that we used to have from Moscow and St. Petersburg last November. Ukraine is a new star developing for uh, source market for Cyprus, which doubled its numbers last year as a result of the visa facilitation uh, that was uh, enabled uh, the Ukrainians to visit more uh, spontaneously and spend their holidays in Cyprus to reach 100,000. Neighboring Israel from 40,000 to reach 100,000, uh, again with the gradual lifting of restrictions and more liberalized environment of flights between Israel and Cyprus. Middle East and Gulf area from the current 55,000 to 200,000, and we've heard the great potential that the Gulf carriers and a more liberalized airline environment will facilitate towards this end. And also the great potential that the BRICS countries uh, uh, offer with the priority market for Cyprus being China, whereby in the next five years to reach 100,000. I think uh, I will skip the next, uh, the next slide because it was already mentioned by the previous speakers how other countries have managed to capitalize from the great potential of the BRICS uh, markets. Uh, we we'll see here notable examples like Croatia almost doubling their tourist arrivals from China and a 40% growth from Brazil, Netherlands 18% and so forth and so on. Coming back to our target markets, just as a dimension that we have not touched in the specific medium term vision, is which will give another dimension to the prospects of uh, the tourist development of Cyprus, is the great market of Turkey. So uh, just briefly imagine with the reunification of our island, this great market, source market, what number of tourist arrivals we could have to Cyprus from Turkey. It's sufficient to mention here that uh, last year, 2013, more than 800,000 Turkish tourists visited Greek mainland and the Greek islands. And they were very big spenders. They entered the shops and they emptied the shops after their purchases. So let us uh, see how uh, we can really achieve this medium term vision. Uh, we can definitely do so by allocating sufficient funds and an extraordinary marketing budget to be developed in order to enable us to target effectively these markets and the specific segments of each market which we can help us to reach the goal while highlighting our strong competitive advantages, and I can assure you we have many strong competitive advantages as a tourist destination. This has become evident from the SWOT analysis that was carried out uh, last year by the University of Technology of Cyprus through the SWOT analysis within the context of our part within the national strategy of smart expertise for Cyprus for the period of the program 2014-2020. So, looking at the strengths, uh, one very big strong point of Cyprus is the stable poli the political stability and security that our island offers, and this has become evident in all the volatile conditions that were prevailed in, in the Middle East uh, area, where Cyprus was the natural and uh, immediate uh, safe escape for the evacuation of the foreign nationals and the members of the various embassies in these countries uh, in uh, leaving the uh, volatile uh, uh, areas. The idea of geographical location was mentioned earlier, the good infrastructure with our modern air force and extensive road network, the fine and mild temperatures during winter and the sunshine prevailing all year round, and the high educational level of the local population with uh, wide knowledge of English and other foreign languages. In the weaknesses, uh, and it is very useful to concentrate on the weaknesses in order to find corrective actions uh, to this, the small size of the local market, 
the inefficiencies and undue ways that is exhibited between the various government departments and the lack of coordination, which in a nutshell affects our, our very credibility both as a state and as a tourist and forex investment destination. The high cost of lending was a result of the recent bank crisis uh, and the Eurogroup decision of March 2013 and the increasing unemployment rate uh, that we are recording uh, in the last couple of years. This automatically gives us the direction for the opportunities so as to find the effective ways to fight bureaucracy and red tape. The establishment of an expanded development framework for the use of renewable energy sources so as to reduce the high energy cost, which has become the second highest cost uh, element of our operational cost. The promotion of alternative forms of tourists with development of special interest tourists and the interface of tourists with the other sectors of the economy, capitalizing on the market higher effect that the tourist sector uh, evidently demonstrates. The threats that we are facing is the overtaxation as a result of the adherence that we have to uh, follow with the MOU with Troika and the inability to connect productive sectors to ensure synergies, which is something of a challenge. The final conclusion of the study came out to what we all know in Cyprus is that the fields of tourism and energy constitute the main driving forces and sectors of the national economy which can be used as the tools for the further development of uh, our national economy and uh, by relying on the foundations of environment and its current capacity, what in other words we refer to as sustainable development, the use uh, and uh, taking advantage of all the advancements in information technologies and in our human resources. Now coming to the six pillars of the development program which will enable us to reach our medium term uh, vision and goals. One, adoption of an open skies policy. Let us extend our hospitality, the famous Cypriot hospitality, by saying to airlines all over the world, you are welcome to Cyprus. Simplification of the issue of visas, the extension of the successful implementation of the mechanism that was adopted for the Russian and the Ukrainian markets with the remarkable growth rates that we have seen in our case <coughs> arrivals from these countries. The encouragement of airlines and tour operators for expanding their programs on an all-year-round basis. The improvement of the competitiveness of the hotel industry, especially during the winter season, by reducing the cost of our industry, labor, energy, and taxation, and other uh, fees, and by elaborating further on the various programs of intensive training and the training of human resources thus contributing as uh, the sector of prospect uh, to reduce the unemployment, especially of the youth uh, in our country. Fifth, to encourage local authorities to enrich their cultural and other events during the winter season in order to add value to our arrivals during the winter season. And last but not least, the creation of more auxiliary tourist projects uh, that will add value to the wider uh, meaning of the term of tourist product with the creation of casinos and here we have uh, publicly said our uh, satisfaction with the uh, decision of the government to proceed with the development of a mixed uh, resort casino uh, uh, to be uh, announced through international tendering in the near future. The creation of more golf courses to the existing four ones more health and wellness centers and sports centers, which in parallel will enable us to offer the specific product that will meet the needs and wants of the special interest tourists like religion, cultural, sports and nature tourists, corporates and incentives, and wider business tourist segment, the health tourists and wellness, the wedding segment, third age tourists, and gastronomy. Let us now take a quick close look to the German market for Cyprus. Again, we see a declining trend in our tourist arrivals from Germany in the last decade, reaching <coughs> last year to the lowest record low level of the last 20 years 
to just 105,000 uh, tourist arrivals from Germany, vis-à-vis -vis the record level that we achieved back in 1997. And let us clarify why this has happened back in 1997, which will help us and give us a pointer as to what our actions should be. Back in 1994-95, concerted effort by the stakeholders in Cyprus, together with our partners in Germany, the airlines and the tour operators, we committed ourselves in a dedicated three-year action plan in order to collectively uh, take the actions and measures that will enable us to achieve the growth uh, from the, of the tourist arrivals to Cyprus from Germany. And this commitment and coordinated effort resulted in reaching from 120,000 of 1993 uh, tourist arrivals uh, to Cyprus to more than double that number. Let us look at another dimension of this. If we break down the total annual tourist arrivals from Germany to summer and winter, we see a doctrine that prevails very much loud and clearly. A successful summer season pushes up in parallel and uh, by inherently uh, the winter tourist arrivals uh, as well. And this, for Germany in particular, if we look into a further breakdown of the monthly distribution of the tourist arrivals, don't be scared by the graph, it's the monthly distribution for the last 10 years of the tourist arrivals from Germany, but the very loud and clear message that is coming here is that the peak season of the tourist arrivals from Germany to Cyprus are not in the traditional, in what we know, peak season of July and August, but it's in the spring and autumn. And there are explanations to that, which we'll see later on. So this enables us and helps us in mitigating the ma major challenge that we have, the issue of seasonality and extending the summer season from the current seven months to at least nine to ten months uh, extended summer season. Now it's a shocking revelation. A benchmark, Gran Canaria, the most popular destination for the winter holidays of the Europeans and of the Germans as well. Uh, in winter 2011 to 12, the Canary Islands managed to attract a total of 4.1 million tourists, of whom 1.1 million German tourists as again the humble figures of Cyprus of 350,000 tourists, of whom 50,000 German tourists. And this, in rational thinking and analysis, is really appalling because Cyprus enjoys key comparative advantages as against Gran Canaria, which seems that we have not managed to make the most of it. Milder winter climate and temperatures and longer hours of sunny days during uh, winter. Shorter flying times from Germany to Cyprus vis-a-vis -vis to the Canary Islands. Wealth of history and heritage covering a time span of 10,000 years and rich customs and culture. And to just uh, name the specific example of mean, wa mean, mean water temperature in November in Cyprus at 22 degrees Celsius vis-a-vis -vis 18 degrees in Gran Canaria. And in March, 17 degrees centigrade in Cyprus vis-a-vis -vis 14 degrees centigrade in Gran Canaria. Another important dimension in mitigating seasonality and attracting more traffic to Cyprus is the issue of accessibility and competitiveness. That's definitely, as we've heard earlier by the previous speakers, a most dynamic element. We have to acknowledge and thank Hermes Airport for their attractive incentive schemes that they offer to both existing airlines to increase their frequencies and volumes of traffic and for attracting new airlines and open, the opening of new routes with escalating benefits for establishing all year round operations, which already yielded definitely some positive results uh, in this direction. But at the same time, we have to keep our eyes open and our ears even more open of hearing and listening to what is happening at other competitive airports and destinations. The case of Turkey and the Greek Islands, 
by waving the landing fees for extending charter flights during winter, or the case of Egypt, of risk evasion incentives by guaranteeing a minimum load factor of charter flights, or even a more recent decision by the Spanish government that they have decided, as they officially announced it on the 14th of October of last year, of cutting their airport tariffs charged to airlines and the per passenger rates on routes that carry additional travelers, and this cut extends up to 75%. And even the complete removal of the tariffs for new routes uh, in their aim to increase the traffic in Spain's 46 airports by about 2%, 2%, which in absolute numbers means four additional million passengers. Let us look at the profile of the German uh, holiday maker uh, and what are the key factors in their decision making when they choose any holiday destination. We see value for money, natural environments, a safe and secure destination, great swimming beaches, good food, wine, local cuisine and produce, local hospitality, Nature, native or cultural heritage or activities, rich history and heritage, and I will not question the other one, because on all and every single one of the above, Cyprus has something very competitive to offer. And the other important factor in their decision making is flights with no stopovers. There we have a problem. This is another study I will not go through because it was mentioned earlier by the previous speakers, but the key consumers, uh, the key issues that consumers will demand would be more individual and authentic travel experiences, and they will rely more than ever on technology, mm -hmm. and that was elaborated by the previous speakers, so there is no need to repeat them. Let us take a grassroots view now from the Akiana Hotel in Cyprus, by the answers they receive from their clients on key questions. Why Germans and Austrians prefer Cyprus? Because the most important reason is Cyprus proximity to Germany. It needs just three to three and a half hours flight time with direct flights to reach the island. As it was mentioned earlier, is the ideal range in order to offer maximum <coughs> utilization of the aircraft, the biggest asset of the airlines that they invest in order to have them fly, not sitting idle on the ground. So Cyprus can offer with our creativity and actions and cooperations with the airlines and tour operators be an ideal destination for winter so that we facilitate airlines to productively use their aircraft. Better weather than the Spanish islands, especially during the spring and autumn, and we have seen it in the graph earlier. Cyprus has a high standard of hospitality, history, and tradition. Cyprus provides both small picturesque villages and large modern cities. The combination is unique according to the experience and uh, revelation of their own uh, very German uh, tourists that visited our island. There is good infrastructure, small is beautiful, it's great for cycling, easy to communicate, almost everybody speaks English. Best water, conditions in the best water conditions in the Mediterranean with our blue flag beaches and the Europeanly acclaimed best and cleanest beaches of Europe. Why is there a drop in tourist arrivals from Germany? Limited direct flights, increasing Russian tourists that if they mingle in the same hotel in big numbers with Russian tourists and Germans, they seem to not go very well. But media exposure as a result of the Eurogroup decisions uh, of last March, especially in the German market, but or non-existent marketing of Cyprus in Germany. And on the qu question they posed to them, how can we attract more tourists from Germany, facilitate flights and give subsidies to airlines, focus on history and tradition, and those sports, cycling, triathlon, and other during the winter. I will not go through, but of the basic factors in the decision making of the Germans, they can enjoy a full week's holiday of unique experience on every single day by a day excursion of each segment that would be appealing uh, to them, and then to be followed by the return to the hotel from the day excursion, 
where we, they can spend time either in the gym for the more active ones or spend time in the spa taking advantage of the high standard uh, range of facilities and services offered by our hotel industry or if they are more romantic like myself, go for a romantic walk by the seaside and enjoying the sunset uh, during winter time. And I can tell you my personal experience. We had the New Year's uh, Réveillon at the Seaside Hotel and despite the early morning hours after we enjoyed uh, all of us a month with other hundred German tourists that they were holiday in Cyprus, I was amazed after the breakfast to see every single one of them with their swimsuits lying and sunbathing by the beach. It's, this is something unique. So apart from the activities after the day excursion, the evenings can be equally entertaining by offering different entertainment programs for every night so as to take their time uh, really uh, enjoyable. So the key parameters for success in developing further the German market for Cyprus and the recommended strategic directions can be uh, concisely uh, contained within the pillars of improved accessibility, improved competitiveness, further enrichment of the tourist product, and very important, much more targeted and effective promotion and communication campaigns. And all this having as a prerequisite the commitment and trust between the key stakeholders for a win-win-win proposition that is airlines, tour operators and travel agents and the local suppliers and the destination at large based on a long-term cooperation of minimum three years duration. We've seen this work when we had the last record uh, tourist arrivals from Germany. And then on this we have a proposed plan of action of 10 points with close rapport and cooperation with our partners to develop, implement, and monitor the success of this commonly agreed plan of action. Now let's take as a closing a leap back to the future to share with you our longer term vision. And our longer term vision says by taking as benchmark successful examples of other destinations and hubs. So can we do it ourselves as well by using the success stories, let's say, of Singapore on the United Arab Emirates, or I'll take the example of Dubai in particular. Why not Cyprus can be the new major regional hub connecting Europe, Africa, and Asia, not just for transport traffic, but by capitalizing and providing fifth freedom rights to GAF carriers and others that would be interested to use Cyprus and help us penetrate either new or existing markets, but much more effectively taking into account the limitations and considerations of our own airline Cyprus service. Just briefly concentrate on this table, Dubai and Cyprus. Dubai, with half the land area of Cyprus, with a local population of half the population size of Cyprus, but a multiple number of expatriates working in Dubai, thus expanding the size of the local market, thus enabling companies to achieve much more economies of scale, etc. And one will say, as is the fear in Cyprus, but this will increase even further unemployment. The unemployment rate in Dubai, although shows at 7.6% there, and this is higher low statistics, on the more active segment of the population of 25 to 54 years of age, the unemployment rate is at 1.4% in Dubai, vis-a-vis -vis our 70% unemployment rate. And despite all this more than minute size of Dubai, they have four, size, four times the size of GDP at 83 billion US dollars, vis-a-vis -vis our 23 billion US dollars, and for almost four times the number of tourist arrivals compared to Cyprus. So I close, and I thank you for your patience and attention with three quotes. One from Galileo, who said, all truths are easy to understand once they are discovered. The point is to discover them and be willing to discover them. 
The second by God, whatever you can do or dream you can do, start doing it. Boldness and bravery have inherent genius, power, and magic within them. Let's begin with it now. And last but not least, Walt Disney, who said, the way to get started is to stop talking and start doing it. And that's what I tend to do, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you. And allow me to thank our colleagues and members of the project group, uh, Mr. Victor Mandovani, uh, Mrs. Nicoletta Tarasiadu, and Mr. Nassus Fadiliorio, who worked with me together to make possible this presentation. Once again, thank you.